In the event that the screen will not turn on, check the power cable is properly plugged into the back of the machine and that the plug is properly inserted into the electrical socket at the wall and switched on. If the screen will still not switch on, then one or more of the fuses in the power socket may have failed and will need replacing. They can be replaced by switching the on-off switch on the back of the machine into the off position and removing the power cable. With a screwdriver, remove the fuse case from the back of the machine. The two fuses should be replaced with new ones and once secure, the fuse case can be inserted back into the machine and clicked into place. Reinsert the power cable and turn the green on-off switch into the on position. This should now start the screen. During the auto-checking process, audible and visual alarms with an indication of corrective action will appear if the system detects a problem. If the machine is reporting that the temperature probe is not connected, the corrective action would be to disconnect and reconnect the temperature sensor from the disposable set and the BRS system. If the pressure sensor alarm is activated, the corrective action would be to remove the silicon tubing from the pressure sensor, stretch it and replace securely. Then check the placement of the heat exchanger within the heating unit, reposition if necessary and then close the pump head cover. The Begin button will reappear when the corrective actions have been implemented. An alarm will be activated if the temperature drops below 2 degrees centigrade of the set working temperature. The alarm can be muted by pressing the mute button. The machine will automatically increase the power to the heating plates to achieve the set temperature. Once this has been achieved, the alarm will then stop and the equipment will continue normally. If the temperature does not automatically restabilize to the set temperature, switch off the machine and refer to sections 3.4 and 3.5 entitled Clucking for the corrective actions. In the event of the temperature exceeding 2 degrees centigrade above the set temperature, an audible alarm will be activated. The equipment will automatically regulate to achieve its set temperature. Wait for the temperature reduction. The alarm will then stop and the equipment will continue normally. Enhanced safety features ensure that the machine will automatically cut power if the system continues to operate above 2 degrees centigrade of the set temperature. If the temperature does not automatically restabilize, switch off the machine and refer to section 3.5 entitled Clucking for corrective actions. If the pressure sensor detects high pressure due to an obstruction in the line, it will activate the alarm, the pump will be stopped and the power to the heating plates will be cut. If this occurs, check both stopcocks are in the correct positions and that the inline clamps are open. Check the pump cover for kinks or blockages causing an obstruction in the tubing lines. Once the obstruction is identified and removed and the pressure decreased, the system will restart. A clucking noise during operation may be due to an obstruction or a blockage of the catheter. If you hear this noise, check that all clamps are open and that both the stopcocks are in the correct recirculation positions. You may hear a clucking sound if there is a problem with the position of the catheter. Occasionally, the catheter tip may be adhered to or occluded by the bladder wall, or potentially not properly inserted, and in these situations it will need to be repositioned. In order to reposition the catheter, turn off the pump and open the pump head. This will release any negative pressure. The machine will alarm and display a pump head error message at this time. Deflate the balloon by removing 5 to 10 millilitres of water. Once the balloon is deflated partially, withdraw the catheter by one third to one half of its length and rotate it at least a quarter of a turn. 
Gently re-advance it and re-inflate the balloon by inserting 5 millilitres of water. Gently pull the catheter out until it is stopped by the balloon. This will ensure the correct position of the catheter. Once completed, close the pump head and restart the pump. If you feel there may be an obstruction in the catheter, the solution is to clear the catheter aspiration ports. To do this, switch off the pump using the touch screen. Open the pump head to release any negative pressure and fill a Lua Lock syringe with 10 milliliters of fluid. Attach the syringe to the blue installation port and turn the blue stopcock open to the bladder and syringe and closed to the system. Force the fluid with moderate pressure through to the aspiration tip and eyelets of the catheter. The objective is to remove any debris and any clots that have settled in the aspiration ports. Then remove the fluid by gently pulling it back into the syringe. Turn the blue stopcock so that it's now closed to the syringe and open to the bladder and the system. Then remove the syringe and replace the protective cap. Close the pump head and restart the pump using the touchscreen on-off switch. Occasionally, excessive air may be seen circulating in the tubing when the pump is initially switched on. This may be because the tip or the eyelet of the catheter in the bladder is not properly immersed or submerged in fluid, which may be due to a large bladder. The stopcocks may not be in the correct position, or there could be a perforation of the long, thin silicon tubing by the pump head. To take corrective action, switch off the pump by touching the on-off button on the touchscreen. Check that both the blue and red stopcocks are in the recirculation position, which is closed to the installation and drainage ports. Open the pump head to check the integrity of the long, thin silicon tubing. The tubing may have been perforated by the pump head teeth, if the previous steps are correct and normal, then it may be that the catheter is not properly immersed in fluid. To address this problem, fill a Lua Lock syringe with 10 to 40 milliliters of fluid and attach it to the blue installation port and position the blue stopcock open to the bladder and the syringe and close to the system. Instill fluid into the bladder in 10 milliliter increments to a maximum of 40 milliliters. The objective is to submerge the catheter tip in fluid and achieve a closed fluid-filled circuit. Also, recheck the catheter position. Please refer to section 3.4.2 entitled Clucking Repositioning of Catheter for instructions. Turn the blue stopcock so that it's now closed to the syringe and open to the bladder and the system. Then remove the syringe and replace the protective cap. Close the pump head and restart the pump via the on-off switch on the touchscreen. Allow the system to self-purge and remove any excess air. Air on the sensor will cause a temporary spike in temperature, which will trigger an audible and visual alarm on the screen. Check for any air bubbles around the tip of the temperature probe, located just before the red drainage port. If any bubbles are present, then they may be dislodged by tapping gently with fingertip. If the patient experiences no discomfort during this time, then no further action is required and the temperature will stabilise to 43 degrees centigrade within one to two minutes. To remove fluid from the system at any time, turn off the machine. Turn the red stopcock so that it is open to the system and waistline and close to the catheter. After the desired amount of fluid has been removed, reposition the red stopcock so that it is open to the catheter and the system and close to the waistline. Restart the pump using the touchscreen on-off switch.